The countdown for Christmas is a very long one, especially for a kid. I can remember thinking that it took forever to go through the month of December. The days crawled by so very slowly. From Thanksgiving until school let out for Christmas break was an eternity back then. Those few weeks inched by with sluggishness, like syrup oozing out of a bottle. So slowly that you're just sure your waffles are going to get cold before they're covered. Remember the Heinz 57 ketchup commercial, the song? Anticipation, it's making you wait. And then that voice that comes by the side and says, it's so good. It's making you wait. Really? Oh my goodness, Christmas is slower than that. We used to say it's as slow as Christmas. That used to mean a great deal. Indeed, I, in high school, I posited that Albert Einstein must have missed something in his relativity equations. The passage of time slows down not only as a body approaches the speed of light, but also as a kid's body approaches Christmas. <laughs> but we're finally here, friends, the last Sunday of Advent, the Sunday just before Christmas. Yippee! As an adult, it feels like I've only just now finished digesting my Thanksgiving meal. And I still got presents to shop for and wrap. Can we have another Sunday in Advent? Can we, can we all just have another Sunday? To, we need another week before Christmas, don't we? Oh, the kids are going to throw things at me. <laughs> Even some of the parents are shaking their heads. They want to get it over with. Hmm. Today, in our gospel reading... We have what is usually called the Annunciation unto Mary, the, that she would receive, con, excuse me, that she would conceive and bear a child, a very special child, the Christ child, the Messiah, the, the Son of God. It's a life-changing announcement. Now, note several things here. Firstly, the angel says, greetings, favored one. Or as uh, some translations rendered it, as it gets repeated by our brothers and sisters in the Roman Catholic and some Episcopal churches, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. That's where it comes from, friend. The first part of it comes from there. Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. So yes, Mary did know all of these things. I do love that song, Mary, Did You Know? But her simple answer to that question, a simple answer to that question, her simple answer to that question would have been, yes, Gabriel told me. Right here. Before she even conceived. The song is more for us, Mary, Did You Know? It's really... Tabitha, did you know? Judy, did you know? Joe, did you know? Noah, did you know? Mandy, did you know? Greg, did you know? The song is really directed at us. Because if we knew, if we really knew this story, if we really believed this affirmation, would we act the way we do? Would any of us act the way we do when we fail to express the love of God to others, when we fail to act as Jesus calls us to live, when we fail to do what God calls us to do? Would we do any of the things that we do? Would we fail God the way we fail God repeatedly? 
If we really knew deep down inside the truth of this? Secondly, Mary wanted to know how it would be possible since she wasn't yet married, since she was still a virgin. And the angel's answer is one that has long captivated my attention in these verses. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. That phrasing is riveting to me. I can't let it go. For 30 years, I haven't been able to let it go, to, to, to go beyond it. The words, the power of the Most High will overshadow you or what I'm talking about here. To overshadow, the Greek word is, is episkeazo. And in the Greek translation of the Old Testament and in the New Testament, it is used when something is covering or casting a shadow over something else. Think of having a heavy weighted blanket covering you completely from a head to toe and you feel covered by it and protected by it completely. That's the idea here. You're under and protected by whatever it is. In translating the Old Testament into Greek, the rabbis used this word, for example, when the cloud descended on Mount Sinai, or when God's presence was made known in the tabernacle in the wilderness, when a cloud descended upon it and settled over in the New Testament, it is used when the cloud descends on Mount Tabor during the transfiguration of Jesus. And the voice of God speaks to Peter from it saying, this is my son, listen to him. The cloud that overshadows in these stories represents the mysterious presence of God. Impenetrable like a, a thick fog, so dense that you can't see your hand stretched out at arm's length in front of you. That's the word Gabriel uses here when he tells Mary that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and the power of the Most High will overshadow her. A protective covering of God, of the Holy Spirit, will be over and surrounding her. And because of that, you will conceive, the angel told her, you will conceive the one who will be called Son of God. Now, I can't explain virginal conceptions. No one can, not in this context. It's a mystery, it's a miracle beyond human comprehension. And that's really not the point or issue anyway. The point is that this child, this baby Jesus, this Holy One, will be the son of the Most High, will be called, almost like a title, son of God. Or as was told to Joseph by that very same angel Gabriel, he will be Emmanuel, which means God is with us, the with us God, the God who is in our very midst, the God who surrounds us and fills us and is with us, Emmanuel. God with us. That is who's coming to town, friends. We may sing songs like Santa Claus is coming to town. When I was a child growing up, Santa Claus is coming to town was my favorite Christmas song as a kid, along with uh, the Bing Crosby and Andrew's sister version of Jingle Bells. That was the one I just loved to hear the most, and I loved to sing the most when I was a kid. But the only religious reason why Christians celebrate Christmas. And we celebrate Christmas for many reasons, as do people all over the world. In Japan, they celebrate Christmas. It's a wonderful holiday. Besides, it makes tons of money for businesses. People celebrate Christmas in, all over the world for many different reasons. Some celebrate it because it's a winter festival. Some celebrate it because it's the winter solstice, which is tomorrow night. We as Christians celebrate this time of year. We as Christians celebrate Christmas. Because of this annunciation, 
this announcement to Mary and the event, the incarnation, the infleshing, literally, the infleshing of God in a human being, in a little baby in Judea, Jesus, son of Joseph and Mary from Nazareth. We celebrate Christmas because God comes to be with us, to dwell among us, to reach into us as Mary was reached into and touch us, to, to overshadow us, to protect us from ourselves, from our sin, from our self-will, from our ignorance, from our failure to be that which God has called us to be. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Jesus comes as a little baby to bring to us the grace of God. And that's why we celebrate. We celebrate the conception and then birth of God in our midst to change us and to change the world. May the Christ child come and overshadow us this Christmas. May we be open as Mary was. May we say to the angel as Mary said to the angel, let it be with me according to your word. May we be open to the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit and to giving birth in the womb of our hearts the Christ child anew every day. And in Christmas and in the days and weeks that follow, may we share that child, the love and faith of God that we know in the Christ child, the love and faith of God that we have received in his life, his ministry, his preaching, his teaching, his healing, his forgiving, his dying and his rising. May we share the gift of God's grace that we have received from the Christ child with all. May we be a Christmas people, celebrating the presence, the real presence of Jesus here and now with a world that needs to hear and receive, that needs to know the good news that Christ is with us, that God has not forsaken us, and that we are not alone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let and may God's grace.